Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, I welcome you all to the second lecture of module 1 of the NPTEL MOOC course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, to, uh, the title of today's lecture uh, is The Nature of Stress Part 2. Uh, so, before we uh, talk about today's lecture, uh, let me briefly uh, give you a recap of the lecture 1. So, in the first lecture, we gave an overview of the course. Uh, where we give, uh, try to understand what are the important concepts that will be discussed in this course, what are the major questions that will be addressed in this course. Uh, then we talked about stress as a global epidemic, uh, WHO you know uh, dubbed stress as a global epidemic, primarily because it is a global issue and it is rising continuously and it has many uh, implications and repercussions in terms of you know adversely impacting our health, well-being and functionings in daily life. Uh, so, therefore, it is very important to understand how it impacts our life and uh, what are the dynamics of stress in our life. And one of the reasons that we have discussed why it is rising so much is primarily because of rapidly changing environment and the social situations around us and any changes causes disruptions and stress is a natural consequence of that. Uh, so, uh, therefore, we need to understand all these dynamics of stress to un primarily understand the Im its impact in our life. Uh, then uh, we also talked about various definitions of stress. Uh, we primarily discussed three categories of definition of stress uh, in psychology. One category of definitions are called as stimulus based definition. So, uh, basically uh, here uh, stress is defined mostly in terms of a stimulus or an external uh, event or situation that causes a strain reaction within us. So, it is mostly looked as an environmental demand. Then we talked about uh, response based definitions uh, where stress is mostly defined in terms of the response that happens within us in reaction to an external demand and typically uh, people used to uh, look at physiological responses. Uh, these two categories of definition, stimulus based definition and response based definitions had limitations and because primarily they are very limiting and not uh, uh, looking into the you know dynamic aspect of stress. So, they are no longer used. So, at present the third category of definitions which are more popular is called as basically you know interactional definition of stress. Here, uh, typically stress is defined as an interaction or as an outcome of interaction between the person and the environment. So, stress is neither a stimulus nor just a response, but it is how a person interprets the environmental stimuli and stress is a result of that. So, it is kind of conceptualized as an interaction between the person and the environment. So, this is most popular category of definition and it is at present mostly used when we talk about stress in psychology. Then we talked about cognitive appraisals of stress. So, basically we talked about because stress in the interactional perspective is subjective because it depends on our interpretation process. So, cognitive appraisal basically we talked about as how we interpret a situation and how those interpretation process leads to a stress reaction. So, we discussed uh, Lazarus and Falkman's uh, you know, model of st uh, stress response, where we talked about three uh, uh, you know, uh, appraisal processes that happens in a stress response. One is primary appraisal, where we 
when we judge a situation either as positive or negative. So, that is called as primary appraisal. Here uh, typically we judge a situation, we may judge a situation as irrelevant to us, we may judge a situation as relevant but not threatening. In both of these cases, we may not have any stress reaction because you know uh, these are not threatening and one, in one case it is not relevant at all to me. And uh, sometimes we interpret a situation as stressful. It happens primarily when we interpret a situation in terms of harm loss, threat or challenge also sometimes. So, all this interpretation is basically conceptualized under primary appraisal, basically how we judge a situation. Then comes secondary appraisal, uh, after the primary appraisal, primarily we, we do secondary appraisal, uh, where we try to analyze or interpret how much resources we have. Uh, so, do I have enough resources, skills and abilities to deal with the situation? that interpretation is called as uh, secondary appraisal and uh, the third phase or third process of appraisal is called as reappraisal phase where basically based on the ongoing feedback from the situation you may again you know interpret the situation how am i doing is am i doing good or not so based on that you may have some other consequences so uh, these were the major concepts that we have discussed in the last class so Today, we will talk about uh, different characteristics of stress, major types of stress, major sources of stress. Now, before we go into that, you know, I will just uh, like to add a uh, few more concepts in the de definition aspect of stress. Now, there are few terms that are very commonly, you know, sometimes interchangeably used or sometimes they create a lot of confusion uh, such as stress and anxiety, you know. And many times it is difficult to make or distinguish between stress and anxiety because they mostly co-occur together and both are emotional reactions, symptoms are very similar uh, both you know in terms of mental uh, symptoms and physiological symptoms. Uh, but there are subtle differences between stress and anxiety. Uh, one thing is that stress is typically caused by an external trigger. So, whenever there is a specific trigger, uh, in response to that trigger or a stimulus, we generally uh, experience stress. And the uh, symptoms could include irritability, anger, fatigue, difficulty in concentration, etc., etc. Anxiety, on the other hand, is generally defined in terms of persistent and excessive worries uh, that some that generally don't go away when the trigger is gone or in the absence of trigger also it may remain. So, uh, so generally anxiety is a kind of reaction to stress or it is triggered by a stress and it may remain in the absence of the trigger. Uh, and sometimes you know anxiety can become a full fledged mental health, mental disorder or illnesses. So, some people have generalized anxiety disorder, which basically include people are in general anxious most of the time without any specific reasons. Some people are uh, maybe uh, having social anxiety, for example, where people are highly anxious in going to social situations or you know going into the groups where there are group of people. So, uh, so these are some. Uh, this is one of the different aspects. So some uh, uh, the differences between stress and anxiety. Sometimes fear also is oftenly, often co-occur with the stress and anxiety. Uh, fear is also an emotional uh, response just like stress and anxiety and uh, generally it happens to a known and specific threat fear happens. So, you see a snake the response is fear. So, it is very definite specific threat. Anxiety is mostly an emotional response to imprecise sometimes unknown threat or imaginary threat and mostly it happens in an anticipation and uh, you know what will happen and worry is about what may what has not really uh, as of now happened, but it is mostly in anticipation you are worrying about something. So, you sense that uh, that your boss, for example, you know, you sense that your boss is not happy with you and uh, he is not approving your work. So, probably, so you start worrying, 
uh, I may lose my job, my boss may not be happy with me, why it is happening. So, all this uh, you know creates anxiety. So, it is mostly in anticipation. As of now, for example, he has not been thrown out of job, but he is anticipating. So, all this anticipation process uh, generally comes under uh, anxiety and it may be precise and indefinite, not a very definite kind of threat. So, this fear, stress and anxiety, uh, they may have many commonalities, but there are subtle differences and each of these may trigger each other. Uh, so, apparently sometimes it is difficult to make uh, distinguish or make difference between them. So, with this uh, few uh, diff, uh, uh, introductory concepts, uh, I would like to start uh, today's lecture that is the nature of stress part 2. So, uh, we will start talking about different characteristics of stress. So, one uh, uh, major characteristic that we have discussed in the first class is that stress is subjective and we have discussed uh, the details about it because it, it depends on how you interpret a situation, largely it depends on that. Since it is subjective and it depends on our interpretation process, a uh, lot of stressful reactions are self-created. Self-created basically means we exaggerate a situation and we make it more stressful which objectively such as the situation may not be that stressful. So, we self create and exaggerate those stress. So, it is possible because uh, it is subjective and it depends on the interpretation process. So, uh, people are not very objective in their appraisal of potentially stressful event. Most of the time we are not very objective. So, we exaggerate things. Uh, some people are more prone to feel threatened by life difficulties than others. Those individual differences can be there. A large chunk of our stressful experiences could be self-created by our pessimistic and maladaptive thought processes. So, one thing is uh, we need to understand is that you know uh, that our thoughts and emotions are interconnected to each other. So, if you just uh, draw a diagram like you know. So, both thoughts and emotions are interrelated to each other, they influence each other. So, the, the relationship is bi-directional. So, the kind of thought that we have will have you know it will trigger similar kind of emotions. So, if you have negative thoughts it will trigger negative emotions. Similarly, if you have negative emotions will trigger negative thoughts. So, they are bi-directional relationship they are interrelated to each other. So, similarly, you know, uh, our pessimistic thought or maladaptive thought processes uh, can trigger negative emotions and exaggerate stress and negative emotions in a situation. For example, you know, you fail in an event and it may create stressful reaction and negative emotions, but then you start thinking that I am a failure in life or I may not get success in my life again. I am a worthless fellow. So, if you start thinking like that, you know, a spiral of negative thought starts, then those that will intensify negative emotions and stressful reactions and you will, you will get, you will become more stressed and the, the more stressful you become, more negative emotions you get, they will trigger more negative thoughts. So, it becomes a vicious circle. So, this is how a uh, lot of stress and emotional reactions are self created and exaggerated by our thought processes. We will look into uh, the details of all these things in the coping processes, how we, we self create and how can we stop that. So, this is one thing. So, uh, stress is subjective and it may be self created also. The second characteristics, uh, another characteristics of stress is that you know it is an, so stress is an everyday event. So, it is from our own experiences that we all experience stress on a daily basis. 
uh, waiting in a line, having a car, trouble, trouble in our car, misplacing things, all these are called daily hassles and they all, you know, kind of uh, part of our life and uh, they also create stress, you know, on a daily basis. So, sometimes a major stressful event such as divorce can trigger a cascade of many minor stressors such as taking new responsibilities. So, sometimes a major event may cause many minor additions of stressful event in our life. So, you get divorced, so now you want, you should take, uh, no, now you are supposed to take more responsibilities in life because which was done by your spouse such as cooking or maybe, you know, uh, some financial support that were there, now it is no longer there. So, one major stressful event can cause or you know, cascade of many other uh, minor stressful e events. Now, daily hassles uh, may have significant negative effect on a person's mental and physical health. So, we may think they are very small uh, you know, things and small events in our life, but they in a long term they may have uh, adverse impact in our mental and physical health. The next characteristics of stress is that stress can have additive or cumulative effects. Now, this basically means, uh, basically research shows that minor daily hassles uh, can be more strongly related to mental health than major stressful events. Major stressful events happen, so happen sometimes in our life, you know, it is not always an event happen then we deal with it and generally uh, then we do not experience it again. But daily hassles are like on a daily basis you exp experience them. Uh, so, therefore, they may have more serious repercussions for our mental and physical health. Now, when we say additive effect for example, you know how it is additive for example, you know or let us say you start your day in the morning and there is a quarrel in your home. So, there was a fight with somebody in your home. So, you feel stressed about it. So, this is an event number one, stressful, ev st uh, stressful event number one. Then you go, go to your office. While going to your office, you know, there is a traffic jam and you know, uh, and it is delayed. So, you again feel stressed about it. Then you go to your office and your boss calls you. So, this is stress number event 3 in your life in, in that particular day, which is again caused further stress, you know. So, all these stressful event 1, 2, 3 are getting accumulated in your system because you are not releasing them. Before releasing, one more event is happening. And all this stress is getting accumulated in your system, in your physiology also. I uh, will look into uh, that in the upcoming classes. So, all these additive and cumulative effects, you know, can have, you know, in a long term after, you know, uh, long, in a, in a long term may cause, uh, you know, many negative impact on your uh, mental and physical health, because they are getting on accumulated, accumulated without releasing them. So, these additive effects may have serious negative consequences when individual experiences multiple stresses frequently in his or her life. So, it becomes a problem especially when we experience multiple such events on a daily basis. Uh, then obviously, it is bound to have negative consequences in our life. Uh, the third aspect of uh, characteristics of stress is that stress may be influenced by our culture. Now, when we say culture, it is generally uh, in a broadly when we say culture it basically means it is shared ideas and beliefs or behaviors of a group. So, when a group of people you know collectively believe uh, or do something you know then it is part of our part of the culture of that group. Now, as we have already discussed that you know uh, stress largely depends on our interpretation of an event. So, our cultural values and norms may influence those interpretation process and then it can uh, you know ultimately influence our stress reactions. So, uh, we all know the people in uh, different settings, different cultural groups have different beliefs and based on that there may be you know effect on the stress. For example, one study shows that you know Japanese and Korean students seem to suffer 
greater exam stress than British suggest a possible culture, cultural difference in the belief lead to difference in the experience of exam as a exam as stressful. So, for example, you know there may be cultural difference in the Japanese and Korean in terms of how much importance you would give to an event such as examination. So, it seems some study shows that you know examination plays much more important role in the Japanese and Korean culture as compared to let us say you know British people. For example, you know another example you know, being a gay or lesbian could be highly stressful in a culture where it is not accepted. Uh, and uh, it may not be that stressful in uh, let us say some European countries such as Spain where it is much more open and no, uh, people are more accepting to them. So, those cultural aspect may influence how we experience stress. The another characteristics of stress is that you know stress can have spillover effect. Now, spillover effect basically refers to the process where stress in one domain of life such as workplace spill over to create stress in another domain such as family relationships. So, spill over effect basically you know stress gets kind of you know transferred from one domain of life to another domain of life such as from workplace to family life. So, typically uh, when people you know generally say that they are not able to maintain work life balance. Basically, you know, they are talking about spillover effect of the stress. So, basically, they are saying, you know, too much stress in the workplace is influencing their family life. So, this is a very common experience, and uh, stress can have, uh, you know, uh, uh, spillover effect. Now, this spillover effect is can be bidirectional. So, stress from family life can influence stress in the workplace, and the stress in the workplace can influence your family life. So, it is not always one directional, it can be bi directional. So, basically, spillover can happen in either direction. Uh, there can be positive spillover effect also. For example, you know, uh, the positive emotion experience at a workplace can lead to positive mood and interaction in your family members at home. So, uh, this, uh, this is not always uh, necessarily the negative spillover effect, there can be positive uh, spillover effect also. The next uh, characteristics of stress is called as a stress contagion or stress transfer. Now, stress contagion or stress transfer basically refers to the process where one person's reaction to stress affects the health of a significant other such as spouse, significant other. For example, you know spouse depression affects one well well being of other. So, basically you know contagion of stress is basically it is a transfer of stress from one person to another person particularly who are very close to us. Stress spillover is basically you know transfer of stress from one domain of life to another domain of life. So, this is the basic difference. So, human beings are very uh, sensitive to emotions and uh, it is not we do not experience emotion in isolation only. So, our emotional experiences influence people who are around us particularly close people who are around us and who are strongly connected to us. Uh, and we can many time uh, not just consciously, but unconsciously influence others emotion by our own emotion. So, this is in general called as effect contagion. So, emotions are highly contagious. So, you experience an emotion, it is transferred to people around you. Now, this is a good thing in terms of evolutionary perspective because it facilitates bonding and coordination between people. So, we are influenced by others emotions. So, we it helps us to facilitate bonding and coordination with other people. So, it, it is a facilitator, facilitator of uh, social life. So, uh, this is a very functional also. So, our emotions are not just personal and private experiences, they are likely to get transferred and influence people around us. Uh, for example, in an interesting study uh, by Waters, West and Menders in 2014, they found that you know mother stressful experiences are contagious to their infants 
and can reciprocally influence each other's physiological reactivity. So, what they did in that experiment is that you know uh, the researcher uh, in the research setting uh, the infants were separated from the mothers. So, in infants were you know kept in a separate room and researcher played with them in a separate room and mothers were sent to another room for experiment experimental task for performing experimental tasks and mothers were divided into three groups or settings uh, to perform tasks. In one group mothers were supposed to perform stressful positive evaluation tasks. So, there is some positive evaluative task is given it is positive, positive task, but still stressful. Then in another group uh, stressful negative evaluation task was given to mothers. So, they were supposed to negatively evaluate some task and which was stressful and third was a control group where they were given non stressful task. So, mother, uh, uh, this three group of mothers they did uh, uh, these tasks and after the completion of task uh, they were reunited with their infants and uh, research showed that uh, infants physiological reactivity. Uh, physiological reactivity, reactivity in terms of heartbeat and other uh, you know measures exactly mirrors mother's uh, reactivity physiological reactivity so even though infants were not at all conscious of what mothers were doing but uh, when mother became stressful after doing a task and that they, they were still stressful infant could unconsciously sense those stress and it got transferred to them uh, and especially this was much more when you know mother uh, group of mother who did stressful negative evaluation task they showed um, greater physiological correlation with infants showing stress contagion. So, it can happen very unconsciously you know especially you know between parents and children their emotions can very strongly be contagious. So, so it can be highly contagious also. Now, after uh, so, these were some of the major you know characteristics of stress uh, that we can you know explore in our life also. Now, uh, we will talk about the major types of stress you know what are the types of stress that people talk about uh, in various fields and particularly in psychology. So, stress can be you know uh, divided into acute versus chronic stress. So, acute stress basically means uh, these are any stressors that have a relatively short duration and a clear end point. So, acute stress are basically you know uh, stress which are which we experience for a short duration of time and there is a clear end point to it. For example, you know you are waiting for a result of your test or an exam result. So, it uh, just waiting because the result may come let us say after one hour. So, it can be stressful, but it will end and it is for the brief period of time. Uh, such stress are called as acute stress. Uh, then another category of stress is called as chronic stress. Chronic stress are kind of opposite to acute stress. These are category of stress that are rela relatively for long duration and without any clear end point. For example, you know you are experiencing poverty in your life. So, we do not you do not know when it will end and it is for a long duration and you do not know any clear end point or living with an abusive partner. Uh, so, you are not able to kind of you know uh, remove that obstacle in from your life and you do not know when it is going to end. So, such stress are called chronic stress and these uh, chronic stresses are most dangerous categories of stress primarily because you know all the negative impacts are primarily done by chronic stress particularly the you know uh, all the adverse impact of stress on health and well being is primarily done by this chronic stress so we'll talk about their impact but this is one category of stress which is most uh, harmful for our well being The another way of looking at stress or uh, categorizing stress are dividing social stressors into three categories. One is life events, chronic strains and daily hassles. So, 
life events can be stressful uh, and they are mostly acute changes that require adjustment with a relatively short time period they are more like acute stress uh, but uh, may happen specifically in the context of some life events such as loss of job they can be very stressful so especially the unexpected and off time life events are more stressful so for example sudden death of loved one or somebody getting widowed prematurely such life events are more distressing because you are not expecting them these are kind of unexpected events some life events are traumatic events uh, such as sexual assault which are very extremely stressful and uh, may have long lasting impact in our mind chronic stress we have already discussed uh, they are you know for long duration and without any end points daily hassles are generally the minor events that require adjustment in our day to day life basis like you know traffic jams you know misplacing things etc etc people also distinguish between distress and eustress so eustress basically is kind of considered as positive stress so some stress are positive in the sense that they are beneficial for us they motivate us and challenges us and challenges us to grow improve and achieve goals in our life so stress also motivates us to grow in our life to achieve goals in our life so in that sense many stress are good and positive so they are called as u stress distress is generally term that is used for all these negative aspects of stress so generally when we talk about stress we are typically talking about distress now there can be many other sources of stress uh, one of the major sources of stress are called as frustrations uh, frustrations occur in any situation in which some kind of pursuit of goal is kind of thwarted or we are not able to reach a particular goal when whenever there is an obstacle in reaching a goal uh, that causes frustration for example you want to immediately reach to some situation but some place and there is a traffic jam you are stuck in a traffic jam so it will cause frustration and uh, some frustrations such as failures and losses can be very stressful uh, other examples could be not getting you know promotion even after hard work can be highly frustrating because it is a kind of obstacle to reach your goal of promotion psychologist john dollard and his colleagues in 1939 they proposed a hypothesis called as frustration aggression hypothesis where they said frustration always produces an aggressive urge and aggression is always the result of prior frustration so they are saying frustration is most commonly associated with aggression aggressive urge so frustration leads to aggression uh, this is one of the common our own experiences also uh that you know the one natural outcome of frustration is that we become aggressive you know and we tend to feel aggression another source of stress is called conflicts conflicts in our life also creates uh, stressful situations in our life so conflict occurs when two or more incompatible motivations compete for expression so whenever in a situation we have two or more incompatible compatible uh, motivations are there and both wants to express in that situation you know then it is called as a conflicting situation so we'll try to understand more about this uh, so in cart lewin in 1935 they discussed three types of conflicts that we experience in our life one is called as approach approach conflict this happens when one has to choose between two equally desirable but incompatible options so there are two desirable things that we want to do both are equally desirable but you know but they are incompatible to each other so if you do one other is kind of incompatible to that so that creates a conflict for example you know uh, you want to stay healthy and also want to eat unhealthy foods so both are attractive to you you want both but you know but if you do both together they are kind of incompatible to each other conflicting to each other so it creates a conflict and such conflict may cause uh, further stress then there can be avoidance avoidance conflict 
this happens when one has to choose between two equally undesirable options. So, in case of approach approach there was two equally desirable option which are incompatible to each other. Here there are two equally undesirable options. For example, you know uh, a patient with serious illness has to choose between having a traumatic surgery or long term therapy with unpleasant side effects. So, one has to choose between two undesirable options both they do not want you do not want to choose any of them, but you know somehow you are forced to choose them uh, which one to choose. So, there is a conflict should we go for a surgery or sh should we go for some long term therapy which has negative consequences you have to choose one. So, then it may cause conflict and stress. The third category of conflict is called as approach avoidance conflict. This happens when there is a desirable and undesirable factors within a single option. So, you want to do something there is an option for doing something, but there is a desirable aspect to it there is an undesirable aspect to it. So, there is an approach and avoidance aspect in one option. For example, a person wants to go to the gym, but also believes that gym membership is unnecessary and extravagant expense. So, he wants to build his body and go to gym, but you know he is finding gym membership is kind of extravagant expense that he is who will find it difficult to pay. So, this is the same th option, but there are two both desirable and undesirable options are within the same option. So, then such situation may create approach and avoidance conflict. Uh, the another category of uh, sources of stress is our life changes. Uh, we have already discussed that you know any changes creates you know new situations and uh, you know need to adjust and disruptions uh, and uh, stress is a natural outcome of that. So, similarly there are many life changes happens in our life uh, uh, throughout our life. Uh, these are basically any noticeable changes in one's life circumstances that require some kind of adjustment. So, the, we all experience many life changes throughout our life. Holmes and Rahi in 1967 they developed a scale which is very popular scale called social readjustment rating scale. It is very popular scale and uh, to measure basically uh, life changes as a form of stress. So, they in that scale they included 43 major life events which are commonly experienced by most of the people such as death of spouse, divorce, personal injury, retirement etcetera. So, these are all examples of life changes then that may be very stressful. Interestingly, they also included some positive events such as marriage can be also stressful because you know even though it is a positive event, but it also uh, creates many changes in your life and you need to readjust to many new changes. So, it can be also stressful in some sense. Then the, uh, the last category of sources of stress are called pressure. Sometimes you know in defining stress we call stress are like pressure in our mind. So, what are pressure? Pressure basically involves expectations or demands that one should behave in a certain way. So, whenever there is an expectation or demand on you that you should behave in a certain way. So, this is called as pressure. So, there is a pressure from outside to behave in a certain way. Uh, so, that can be stressful sometimes for example and then there can be two types of pressure one is called the pressure to perform and another is called the pressure to conform. So, one is under the pressure to perform. So, many times we experience pressure to perform when he or she is expected to perform task and responsibilities quickly, efficiently and successfully. So, whenever you know there is a pressure to perform basically means. So, there is an expectation or demand on you that you need to perform a task or responsibilities efficiently, quickly, successfully. So, there is a pressure you know there is a deadline you need to perform something efficiently within those time periods. So, there is a pressure and it can lead to stressful reactions. Pressure to conform on the other hand involves 
pressure to follow others expectations. So, many times uh, people uh, especially the our near and dear one have many expectation on us and they tell you to behave in a certain way. So, that is especially in social, social norms and other things. So, sometimes there is a pressure to confirm for example, you know there is a pressure many times we experience pressure to follow our parental values and the rules you know which you may not like to do but you know you have to follow them simply because it is uh, your parents are telling you and it is a social norm. So, there are expectation on you. So, those kind of pressure also create stress in our life. So, uh, these were some of the important concepts uh, the, uh, related to stress particularly we have discussed you know various characteristics of stress, various types of stress and various sources of stress. So, with this I will end today's lecture. Thank you.